Hi and welcome. This video will demonstrate creating a plan drawing in the Visio interface within uh, System Integrator 2015. So to start, uh, go to the Start button, go to Projects, and then Manage Projects. Select uh, the product you want to work with, um, and in this case, I'll choose this one. I'm going to check it out from the server, very important so it can be worked on. Uh, this already has a uh, Visio drawing created for it. If not, you could always uh, create a new Visio drawing here or here or right clicking. You can get there at least three different ways to uh, create a drawing. But in this case, let's double click it and this will open in uh, the SI 2015 Visio interface. And here we are inside of the Visio interface. You can see over here your list of products. Of course, you've got your shapes tab here and the project editor um, here in its own window. We'll go ahead and minimize this and take a look here. You can see that there's a floor plan that's already been inserted here. Um, I did that ahead of time. Uh, we have another video and documentation covering how to work with floor plans. This floor plan happened to be drawn directly using Visio shapes. So um, you can do that in the shapes window down here inside of Visio. Um, you can go to more shapes and depending on what version of Visio you have, this list will be uh, possibly longer. Um, I'm using the standard version of Visio, the professional version, and I think there's a premium version too. Uh, they have a lot more stencils than this, but uh, the basics are here. So if you come here and look at um, maps and floor plans, building plan, walls, doors, and windows, uh, that will open up a stencil here and uh, you can essentially draw your own floor plan if you'd like. But the most common thing people will do will uh, insert a CAD drawing as a uh, background uh, for uh, laying out basic shapes uh, or possibly a PDF or a JPEG image. Uh, those are all options. And again, those are functions of Visio uh, covered elsewhere where you can insert a picture, a CAD drawing, or over here an object if you're going to insert um, a PDF file. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drag over uh, a product. And in this case, I'm going to pull over one um, from the product editor, in this case a speaker. We'll go ahead and just drag this over, I'll drop it right here, and then we'll zoom in and take a look. So what you can see here is um, a default shape for a speaker, and it's just very simple icon. Uh, it says IN-001, that's the component ID, and uh, there is, of course, shape data associated with this. Um, as with all of uh, the D-Tools SI2015 shapes, we do take advantage of the shape data window. So if you don't have that turned on in uh, your Visio interface, just go to your view menu, go to task panes and turn on the shape data window. Uh, much of uh, the properties there can be uh, accessed via a right click, but all of them will list here. So uh, you do have a lot of flexibility on how this uh, shape drops here. And uh, what this shape is, is it's, uh, it comes from the general floor plan symbols. So if you expand this, um, in my case, this was assigned to a circle icon, so that's what it's dropping. You can see that there are basic geometric shapes in here, just for showing, again, placement on a floor plan of where a uh, product is um, being installed or where it's uh, going to eventually reside. So we'll go ahead and see if we can change a few of the properties here. Just for instance, like the fill color, we can just you know, change that to purple if you'd like. Um, the icon text size factor. This one looks a little big, so we can bump this down to say 60 there. Now it fits nicely in there. And now that will apply to this one shape. But if you want to assign globally, um, even just if it's for a project, when I say globally, it will affect all users. Um, so just know that, but you can assign particular shapes to either particular products or categories or subcategories within our software um, real quickly on how to do that. So if I wanted um, the rest of my speaker shapes are dropped just like this. Go over to the uh, products tab here and uh, change your view to go by category in this case. And um, you could choose to show subcategory if you want to get granular and assign to different subcategories. Um, we'll go ahead and do that as well. But uh, my example here is I'm just going to choose the speakers category, right click, shape, assign. And you can see it's already assigned the circle icon shape. Uh, here, but this little uh, option here to display the shape data on assignment will allow you then to change the properties of what drops moving forward. So in this case, I'll make that purple. I'll take the text size factor. I believe I put it at 60%. Hit OK. And what that means is just moving forward, uh, anytime I drop a speaker on the page, it will drop this particular shape. 
So um, now you can drop other shapes other than our general plan shapes. So we also have in this list uh, fire life safety floor plan symbols. Um, we've got electrical lighting floor plan symbols. And then we actually have some of the standard shapes out there. The J standard 710 from uh, Infocom and Cedia. And then down here you have some SIA. SIA shapes that we've created. If you expand this, you can see that these are some standards uh, within the industry, and you can drag those over to the page as well if you'd like, or use those instead of the general floor plan symbols. Uh, so besides equipment shapes here, you can also drop wires onto this page if you'd like. Um, let me go ahead and pull up the project editor here. We have a wire here that it's a bulk wire. This was added in a uh, previous video to this project file. So let's just drag over the wire shape and you'll see what you get here. In uh, my case, this drops blue and uh, displays a particular way. Um, honestly, I don't even remember the default at this point because I've assigned this um, product here or this uh, category, I should say, to always drop a particular color. And that was uh, done doing the same thing I just showed you here where you would right click a category, go to shape and assign. So uh, where did this shape comes from? If you look in the wire shapes list here, this is this bulk wire here. Uh, that's the default shape for a plan page in our software. And you'll notice the wire does have a little arrow on it indicating a signal flow. And at this end of the wire is listed the head end of the wire. So since this is a bulk wire, uh, when you do add it to the project, like we did previously, you are prompted for a wire length and then a head end. And that's what's indicated over here. So if you'd like, you can make a connection take this and attach it to the speaker. Of course, you can you know, shrink this wire down a little bit if you'd like and just show that display there. So now on the floor plan, you are showing uh, the wire with the wire number, what it's attached to and where it's coming from. And because this is a uh, D-Tools wire shape, uh, you know, connected to an actual product, again, if you double click this, it will open the properties on this particular wire. AUD002 in this case is its component ID. Um, so it's very specific that that is that wire. Um, we can report off of this. So if you pull up your project editor, and I'll just expand this full screen now, go to reports, installation, uh, a wire checklist here. Uh, if we expand this, we'll do it by wire number, even though there's only one wire here. And what this report uh, is going to show is exactly what we've told it on that drawing. And let me zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure how this is going to show up in the video. So we'll scroll down a little bit. Here, and you'll see that uh, we show the from device, uh, or we don't actually have the device because it's not attached, but we know it's coming from the audio head end. And again, that relates back. So if you just real quickly look here um, in Visio, if you pull this up, it's coming from the audio head end. And again, there's no device attached on this particular page, so we don't know what device uh, that is. So it's reporting accurately, no device yet. Uh, and then where it's going to, and this is the location of the uh, in-wall or in-ceiling speaker. It's probably an in-ceiling speaker in this case. Um, that's the component ID for that device. Uh, its location is the bar, and um, there's the wire number that is attached to this. So again, the component ID is what is identifying that it's that wire attached to this speaker in this uh, particular example. Now I'll show you some uh, finished examples of some plan drawings inside of uh, System Integrator 2015. This particular example shows a uh, AutoCAD floor plan that was inserted into Visio, and then here are the uh, D-Tools SI 2015 shapes that have been dropped uh, to indicate where different sensors are going, motion detectors, magnetic door locks, cameras, things like that. And in this example, it's just one room, a, um, a theater. But um, this one was drawn to scale where you can see the theater seating, projector, uh, the rack is back here. Again, if you double click the item, it's going to go ahead and open and show you the specs on this particular rack. And uh, of course, the speakers around here, uh, around the edges. No wiring is shown on this particular uh, example.